In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. With your spirit. We are now celebrating this Friday after Epiphany. We're still in the Christmas season, and we ask for all the blessings that the Lord can give us during this time as we begin the new year. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us remember that every prayer and every Mass begins with repentance. So let's look in our hearts, see where we've gone wrong, and ask the Lord to please forgive us and help us be better. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Cast your kindly love your faith and with your splendor and with the splendor of your glory, set their hearts ever aflame, that they may never cease to acknowledge their Savior and may truly hold fast to him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Lord? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus. But by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to our psalm is, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done this for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Please stand and honor the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. It happened that there was a man full of leprosy in one of the towns where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it. Be clean. And the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone. But go show yourself to the priest and offer from your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The report about Jesus spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments, but he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you've ever been to a Jewish Seder, um, one of the questions that the youngest present is asked to recite is what makes this night different than all other nights? Well, last night as I was preparing to preach on these scriptures, I, I wasn't getting anything, so that thought came to me. What makes this year different than all other years? Now, there's a lot we could say about that. But um, I asked myself, there is something different. I, I feel something really different about this year. And one of the things I feel is very different is, unlike every year that I can remember for the rest of my life, no one this year is talking about New Year's resolutions. Okay, usually when the, when the year turns over, everybody says, well, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to make more money and I'm going to be kinder to my friends and all this kind of stuff. 
And of course, nobody does those things, right? I mean, that's why they're, they're New Year's. We, we made the same ones last year, we'll make the same ones next year. Because we, and that's one of the reasons I don't take New Year's resolutions very seriously. First of all, um, I, I kind of disregard them. I don't fulfill them, so I'm suspicious of them. And the second reason I'm suspicious of New Year's resolutions is because they're fashion. And I hate fashion because I don't like being manipulated by someone else's idea. So for example, if the latest fast clothes fashion in Hollywood this year is everyone, everyone wear a bowl on their head. If you, walked out, if you walked out this week, everybody in Hollywood would have a bowl on their head. Okay? Why? Because it's the fashion. It doesn't, there's no ex explanation for it other than fashion. And so that's, one, that's the second reason I've always been so suspicious of New Year's resolutions, because not only do I not do them, but also they're fashion, and I don't like being manipulated what everybody else is doing. But this year, I am looking a little more fondly on New Year's resolutions, and the reason is probably because no one else is talking about them, so it's not fashion, right? So I'm the anti-fashion this year. I'm talking about New Year's resolutions. And, I, and that led me to the thought that for once, I made a resolution I kept it, and it's helping me. <laughs> I want to share that. I realized that for the last few years, I've been on social media a lot. You know, I'm, I'm reading all the snarky things everybody says and all the cool put downs, and I've been I, I watch all that social media stuff. And also, I listened. I read the newspapers, you know, and I listened to all the television media and the news, and it filled me with anger and rage, and I had no peace. So my resolution for this year was. No more social media, no more newspapers, no more being manipulated by these puppets who run the media. And you know, not only have I done that and be able to keep it, it's brought huge peace to my life. You know, all this stuff about yesterday about Washington and, and all this stuff the whole year before about riots and left and right versus, I've pushed all that aside and there's this great calm and peace that's come to me. Now, I'm not saying that you make that your resolution because that's my resolution and maybe it wouldn't be good for you, but, I want to suggest that this year, this new year, you find something like that for yourself that you can do, that you're likely to do, and that's going to bring peace. And I don't know what that is. Maybe it's praying a little bit more. Maybe it's getting back with a family member that you're estranged from. It's not for me to tell you what that is. But surely there's something in your sphere for this new year that's going to bring you peace and give you calmness, because we need it. Frankly, we need, we need peace. I need peace and you need peace. So let's each find something for yourself. It doesn't have to be what gives me peace, but there's, there's something out there that if you resolved and if you followed it, it would give you some peace. And that's my gift, that's my desire for you, is that this new year, whatever else happens, that you are the calm in the storm. You know, in the eye of the hurricane, there's no winds blowing because everything's calm. Well, you be the eye of the hurricane that's surrounding us now. You be the one that's at peace and calm because you belong to Jesus. And whatever happens, he's going to take care of you. So find something to enhance that. Make that your resolution. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now bring our needs before the Father, confident in his love and care for us. Dearest Father, in this new year, we bring our petitions before you, confident in your love and care for us. We begin praying first, as always, for the church, because the church is the body of your Son. It is the church that keeps alive the memory of Jesus and passes on to new generations the memory of him. So for the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, here. We pray for the world. We pray for peace, not only in the sense of not war, but also that people may not hate and be afraid of one another. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. We ask the Lord to bless it and guide it. For our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We've been asked to pray today for the soul of Jeffrey Purdy. So for Jeffrey Purdy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. We've also been asked to pray for the needs of Carmelita Singson. So for Carmelita Singson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And my prayer for you is that you have a wonderful new year and that the Lord will give you true peace. So for this intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pause now for each of you to add your own intentions in the silence of your heart. For each of these important needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you've heard our prayers, those we've spoken out loud and those too deep in our heart for words. Dearest Father, in this new year, please give us your peace and grant these prayers, which we have just made, if they be first of all to your will and second to our best interest. And we ask these things as we ask all things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sinfulness. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Jesus as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions and the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Hosea, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Walk them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our loving Lord Jesus be with each one of you. If there's someone with you at home, please offer them a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for the Lord's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you all the days of your life. Amen. Our Mass of this Friday after Epiphany is ended, but let us go in peace to live the Mass and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and enjoy your weekend.